Welcome to this lectorial um, which is focusing on the role of occupational therapy in palliative care and in particular focusing on adolescent palliative care. In this lectorial we're looking at your perceptions, perhaps well held or ingrained values relating to palliative care and looking at changing some of those to enable you to see the um, huge potential possibilities of, and rewards in working in this area. We're also looking at the interdisciplinary team that you might be working with, the types of settings and different conditions of people you might be working with, as well as the types of interventions and um, exploring with Olivia Dooge at on track at Peter Mac, the sorts of things that she feels are important, particularly working with adolescents. So looking at what you think when you immediately uh, think of palliative care, think of three words that come to mind. Perhaps write those down and revisit those at the end of this week and see whether or not you've changed your mind about the myths or the uh, preconceived ideas that you might have had working in palliative care. Also think about what sort of settings an occupational therapist might work with people nearing end of life and the types of conditions and perhaps ages that those people might be with. See if you can list at least five settings or... So just to give you a little bit of help, we're thinking about the types of conditions of people you might be working with. You can see from this slide that there is a whole range of different conditions. Obviously cancer is probably the one that springs most to mind for most people. However, there are um, all ages involved in palliative care from your premature neonatal babies um, in a special care unit right up to people that are older adults um, with advanced dementia. So this slide indicates that there is a whole range of um, age groups as well as a whole range of different conditions from perhaps progressive neurological conditions, HIV, chronic conditions such as renal disease or cardiac disease, as well as congenital. So when we talk about palliative care as occupational therapists, I think it's useful to understand the term so on this slide is a term from the World Health Organization and the crucial parts of this uh, definition is improving quality of life, um, including both the, the person who may be uh, facing the life-threatening illness as well as their, their family and carers. And the other aspect of this definition that's useful is looking at uh, the physical, psychosocial, spiritual aspects of the person and also emotional I would add as well as looking at symptom management such as treatment of pain. So looking really at the the whole person and so when we talk about end of life care and hospice care it's important to be aware of the differences that these two terms mean. So end of life care can encompass both hospice and, and palliative care uh, during the, the end stage of life. While hospice care, um, the person has a life limiting illness, however, um, the person may be admitted to a hospice for symptom control or to organize perhaps issues such as um, how the family is coping with some of the functional needs but the person may not necessarily uh, be admitted for the entire length of, of their um, end stage of, of life. Um, however, a lot of people do um, choose to, to um, die in a hospice um, because of the type of surrounding, which is generally a non-clinical surrounding. So palliative care, often it's thought of that palliative care is only initiated when the person uh, is extremely ill or very near to, to die, but it, 
can be and, and should be initiated earlier on uh, so that the person's end of life care can be well planned and managed and particularly family and carers well supported. So occupational therapists working in palliative care services as well as um, in other sorts of settings provide a valuable role in supporting families and also the person to perhaps plan, choose and enable that person to continue their um, occu normal occupations or chosen occupations. So this is a um, quote from the American uh, Occupational Therapy Association, their position statement on palliative care, which uh, indicates that um, our main role is about facilitating engagement in daily life or I would say usual. So where do we work? We work in a lot of different settings ranging from um, surgical or medical units in a hospital, perhaps to a hospice, to community based services, palliative care services, but also community health and other um, more rehabilitation services. And commonly um, there are more occupational therapists working in oncology rehabilitation. We work with a variety of, of different health professionals ranging from specialist medical staff, general practitioners, nurses, palliative care nurses, physiotherapists, uh, people providing particularly spirituality and, and counselling services such as chaplains, social workers, uh, speech pathologists who may be looking at the person's communication and... So what's special about occupational therapy in this area? Well, I think it's a rather unique role and it's something that's quite rewarding and because we look at all the aspects of the person, both their uh, motor, their um, emotional, their cognitive uh, and uh, sensory aspects, we're helping the people uh, we're working with who have life limiting conditions resume continue or um, even start new occupations um, and enabling people to live and participate in the, the occupations of their choice is, is pretty special. We don't just look at um, symptom management such as pain or fatigue, we, we also look at um, enhancing the environment and, and op so as I mentioned, we might be assisting a person to return to a previous or old occupation um, that they still want to perform, or we may be looking at new occupations, so things that people want to start that perhaps are on the list of things that they want to always to do um, during their life. We work particularly around, uh, I think, enabling people to do the things that they've always wanted to do. Um, in preparation for their end of life. It may be around uh, making a video um, that might be shown at their funeral, getting their uh, life in order, um, having the social uh, outings and family outings uh, that they want to do um, prior to, to dying. Spirituality, uh, which is one of the core things in the person. Um, so as occupational therapists, we look at the environment and consider how uh, we can enhance the environment both at a physical, social or cultural level to enable the person to participate or engage in their chosen occupations. We certainly look at the person or the personal factors such as um, functional decline, anxiety, mobility problems fatigue, so those things that are um, impacting upon the person's ability. So our core values of being occupational therapists position ourselves very well within a uh, palliative care service or in a service that is working with people who may be uh, at the end of their lives. Certainly I've mentioned before the person-centred or holistic approach is, is very important and being able to tailor um, interventions uh, and, and our service to ensure that we're meeting the needs of, of individuals is um, particularly important. 
also uh, being with people, listening, um, people's narratives, their life stories are very, very important in this er in this stage. And um, being able to listen and uh, work towards this person's goals um, is, I think, a, a truly a great honour and something that it's also, I think, particularly important to um, acknowledge and appreciate that um, everyone is dying, um, some just dying sooner than others, but it's something that we all face. Our um, mortality is is very apparent to, I suppose, people who are nearing the end. Um, it's takes a I think an interdisciplinary approach to deliver the best possible care to these people and one that is respectful of people's wishes where they're at uh, some people may uh, not be ready um, to accept that they're dying and may have be having um, difficulties coming to terms with that uh, working with people to um, ensure that they're given the right service at the right time and that the people around them are also respected and so as mentioned we're particularly interested in meaningful occupations and rather than just sort of see palliative care as put it, tucking the person away in the corner keeping them comfortable keeping them pain free our view is very much that we want people to live life to the fullest right to the very end. So things like daily routines are very important. Often um, having worked with a lot of people who um, have had cancer, uh, seeking some sort of normality and going back to doing their normal occupations has been very, very important to them. People often reprioritize their goals and, and direction, life directions uh, when they know that their time is limited so assisting people to you know, do the things that they want to do at that particular time is uh, very important to them and and often to family although there can be can be some co conflict between what the family want and what the person want um, and that's you know, working through those with with everyone involved um, and certainly um, being aware of, of cultural and, and spiritual factors um, that the person so how do we practice? Well, like in any area, um, developing a therapeutic relationship uh, with the person, but also with their carers or family members is important. Gaining information from just talking with the person, understanding where they're at, uh, what their wishes are, and the sorts of occupations that are important to them is important to us as well not just focusing on their deficits or the things that they've lost but also perhaps identifying their strengths and using their abilities and strengths to perhaps overcome some of those deficits as mentioned before identifying the carers needs so they may perhaps feel quite in the dark about what's happening and may need some education and support um, they may be at a different stage in terms of accepting things. So supporting carers is, is, is essential, particularly if the person's wishes is to die at home or uh, they want to do things that um, may require quite a lot of assistance and support. As occupational therapists, we do a lot of task analysis and during the period of palliative care, particularly towards the end, things are not static, they are dynamic, they're changing, therefore are constantly re-evaluating task analysis. So what sort of interventions, um, all and many, we have to be very flexible in how we provide um, interventions. It depends on where the person is at at that particular time. Uh, working in conjunction with the other interdisciplinary team members is important and communication with them is vital. We may play uh, very much an education role in at times, look at relieving symptoms such as pain and 
and shortness of breath that may be important at other times. Planning days to overcome um, fatigue and being able to do the things that, that people want to do uh, and maybe providing assistance or organising assistance to do uh, other occupations that they wouldn't have been able to do um, if, if they had fatigue problems. Environmental adaptations um, is also very important, particularly again if we're going to support carers um, for the person to die at home and uh, or enable the person to continue to access environments uh, where their meaningful occupations are taking place and probably in particular preventing functional decline. So as I mentioned before it's not about just making the person comfortable but ensuring I'm just giving you a few examples now of different ways that we might interact with people in various uh, stages of life. So for the older adult, um, being able to perhaps go on a holiday or die at home may be the goal. Whereas a child uh, being able to uh, play um, in a hospital ward, normalising perhaps a hospital ward, and enabling social interaction with their friends or, or brothers and sisters. For adolescents, it may be going to a, a concert, maybe having an outing with their friends, and uh, that may be seen as their, their biggest priority. Whereas an adult, it may be more around um, involving the family. So Olivia is an occupational therapist who graduated from La Trobe and she's been working at Peter McCallum Cancer Centre for some time now and recently she uh, commenced at, in a program called On Track at Peter Mac, working predominantly with adolescents and it's a statewide service that goes, um, it's centred at Peter Mac but goes right across Victoria. It consists of a, of a number of other health professionals and also education and vocational consultants with the aim or the um, priorities of the service, uh, particularly on productive occupations, such as assisting the person to return to work or school or university. And it may be uh, not necessarily viewed as palliative care, it may be assisting someone who may have had uh, a tumour in their femur, who's had their leg amputated and then subsequent treatment to that, maybe around assisting them to return to school. So they work um, within Peter McCallum but also right across the state with community based. So when I asked Olivia about her role, uh, a few things came to mind and the first one was around using a screening tool to identify the, the issues or the priorities for the person. She may be involved in doing worksite or school visits or even doing home visits. They look both at productive occupations and also self-care occupations. Uh, however, leisure, leisure occupations, unfortunately, um, due to time constraints, this may not be um, a high priority, although it may be a high priority for the person. Getting the person home, particularly from um, a surgical or a unit, a hospital unit, inpatient unit may be a priority, and resuming normal occupations. And so the sorts of things Olivia does uh, on a regular basis may be around pain management and relaxation training. That may be to address anxiety, assist with sleeping, um, or general coping. Lots of work in around education advice, around structuring uh, the person's day, encouraging them sometimes to push themselves rather than uh, be the lounge lizard or you know, just stay in bed, encouraging them to get up, get going, so that they're main maintaining um, functional ability and, and preventing that decline that will impact. So just a couple of things that Olivia did mention. Uh, one is even though the person is an adolescent, treat them as an adult and really encourage them to make their own decisions. So they may have their family and carers around them. However, she felt it was important to usually talk to them without their parents there 
because they are more inclined to tell you what is really important to them and what are their um, goals and priorities. Working with adolescents, um, there's often some particular things around uh, uh, body image, um, which is important, and, and self-identity, which is forming um, during adolescence. So cancer-related treatments such as chemotherapy or radiotherapy can impact upon uh, things like um, hair loss, the person can lose a lot of um, muscle bulk, but also if they're on things like steroids for things like cystic fibrosis, then they may have a lot of weight gain. And obviously things like amputation will um, disrupt body image greatly as well. Often overlooked is things like sexuality issues, which for adolescents is, yeah, is a major um, priority. and. Uh, Again, talking to the person by themselves rather than with their parents will elicit some of those issues. And I think the other thing uh, that's important working with this age group is, is knowing that they're seeking answers, they're looking for guidance. Uh, however, so coming to the conclusion of this lectorial, I think it's important to reflect on your own uh, values, your own uh, emotions and attitudes towards uh, death and dying. So being aware of those, uh, being in tune with where you're at is essential if you're working with people who are uh, nearing the end of their lives. Working through perhaps some emotional issues, being respectful of other people's um, values and choices, seeing that it's a real privilege to work with people um, in this space, uh, needing, recognising the need to be flexible. This is ever-changing and very, very dynamic. So what may be appropriate for this moment may not be appropriate in a few hours' time. So seeing it, that is, um, it's not one size fits all and it's certainly uh, the one thing will not necessarily be um, the same throughout the whole period of, of end of life. It'll sometimes be very distressing to see people upset, um, to even to face your own mortality I think is is quite challenging but there are some some I think very special times and, and very uh, rewarding times for working with people um, in and also seeing dying as as a unique occupation and it's very special to work with people to give them the sort of uh, so this is just a list of re references that I've used in preparing this uh, I would really encourage people to use uh, some of the references um, relating to palliative care Australia and there is some great resources on the website pcc for you which has been uh, for a number of years now developing up resources for undergraduate health students so uh, again i would really encourage you